Yep. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for making the second day of Triple Tales. Um, can you hear me OK? Yes? OK, great. Um, this talk uh, is going to be uh, a fast-paced talk. Um, I'm sorry, I have a bit of an accent, so if you don't understand what I'm saying, please raise your hand. I'll try to uh, repeat. Uh, there's quite a lot of material to go through, and um, I'll try to do my best to go through it. So uh, it is a local CI production workflow with DevOps. Um, I'm going to jump into the problem space straight away. And so the problem that we're going to talk about is about project maintenance and, well, how do we do Drupal projects and how to add DevOps support without uh, you know, killing yourself and, and done spending uh, lots of overtime. Uh, so the starting a new project would usually look like you, know, you would scaffold Drupal, download it, or using some scaffolding tools. Uh, you would configure some tools and um, configure CI, configure deployment, and you would write documentation. If you already have another project, uh, that you already have existing project, uh, you would uh, you know, read documentation if, if someone left it for you. Uh, you get a database from production, yeah. configure local environment, configure some of those tools that you want to use, like code linting and testing frameworks. Uh, you configure CI, and you configure deployment. That all, um, if you know how to do it, right, it's great. Uh, if you don't know, well, you basically have this situation where you, know, you haven't started to deliver value yet, but you already kind of, uh, you have to do quite a lot of work, uh, even before you start doing some features. So what can you do? How can you solve that? How can you um, uh, minimize the time to, to have a project set up before you even start doing the project? Well, um, this is something that I have identified and I have tried many times. So you can do it from scratch every time. So you basically have all the services and um, you know, binaries, whatever, whatever you're using, your Lando, your uh, stacks and stuff. You connect it. You connect it every time from scratch. Uh, or if you have worked on the previous project that has those scripts and whatever, um, you can just copy it uh, and adapt for your current project. But what about your fellow developers if they don't have access to those previous projects? How would they copy those, that glue code? Um, or you can use some scaffolding tools and add some additional things like Drupal scaffold to start your project plus then add additional things. Or you can use a project template and the project template in this case is something that has everything included and you just kind of clone it for a new project and you start from there. The concept is not new, it's just the implementation of that uh, template is what I'm going to talk about. Um, this is how, um, so if you don't have this, basically this is how you over time start, sleepless nights, that's what I came through, and even more sleepless nights. Um, DevOps is something that I had come up with within my last, um, sorry, two years of, um, two years of uh, participating in different projects in government and other ones went through. It just happened that I went through about 50 websites, setups and uh, onboarding and stuff. And every time I had to do the same thing over and over again, there should be a way kind of to automate all this and improve it so you didn't have to spend time on connecting things. So DevOps uh, is the name. You either love it or hate it. Uh, kind of, you know, uh, it's as you can see the um, the drop and the whale. So you know, you, you, you're a Drupal and your Docker plus some tests and some automation and some love. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so what is it? Uh, the meme thing that I like. So you know, DevOps for Drupal. No, it's basically a DevOps. Uh, so yeah, it's a DevOps plus Drupal DevOps. So the name is there. Um, Right, so what is, what is the thing? It's actually quite a lot of things. And on the project page, there is a huge table just, uh, ex explaining everything, every single detail. But in a nutshell, it's a Drupal project scaffolding template. So just files laid out in a, in a uh, GitHub that you can just download. It also has a Docker stack configuration attached. Uh, I'm going to talk about it later. Uh, it has CI configuration and tools. Uh, it also has production and hosting integration configuration. So if you have, um, well, this, I'm going to talk about it, the types of integration, but well, currently it's Acquia and Lagoon from Amaze is supported. So um, those configuration already provided, so you don't have to configure anything. Uh, documentation repository is quite an important part. Um, 
that uh, you know we never have as developers time to document things. So having some kind of uh, template for documentation that's just available out, out of the box is something useful. And yeah, the kind of most important part is glue code to keep, keep it all together. Um, that's something I'm gonna stop in a moment. And what is not? It's not a replacement for Lando, DDF, Takaido, or any kind of other local uh, development stacks. However, it has a full-featured Docker Compose support, so you can develop, and I've been developing sites using that. Uh, so without using Landors, DDFs, and Takaidos. Um, not, not a custom Docker image res uh, image, uh, images repository. Uh, the project actually uses pretty cool and stable uh, Amazi uh, IO Lagoon images because they are production-grade images. So um, something that you, I mean, this, there are you know, hundreds and hundreds of sites um, powered by those images, and they are stable, and they are production great, so you can use them as well. Uh, it's not a hosting provider, and not a CI system. It just uses CI system, the existing one, and it's not a paid as a service. It's just a template. Uh, the approach. So I had this dream well, a long time ago. Uh, identical environments, when you have your production and your local, and then you have UCI, and you know they're all equal. Um, and before Docker, it was uh, VMs and, and other stuff, and it was really hard to, to achieve this. With Docker, it's um, quite easy now because I mean, all you have to basically have is your CI provider and your local uh, host uh, OS, and your production supports Docker's. And these days, it is the case with the providers that are out there. Um, just to give it a little bit of credibility to what I'm saying, there's actually about 30 sites, uh, custom sites, been already set up using this. Uh, Gov CMS 2.0 and Single Digital Presence uh, Department of Cabinet and Premier of Victoria. Um, two um, other platforms that use similar pro approach, but it's kind of, it's the same identical environments um, idea, and it does work. Um, there are agency, there are vendors that service um, government agencies that are on those platforms, so those vendors, like developers like us, right, they, uh, they can just take the glue code, this whole thing, and just use it. I'm gonna have a demo about all, all of this. Uh, the main features are this, so you have a pure Docker implementation. So this is something I was going for, uh, it's very important if you have looked into other implementations, some of them, like Lando, Takaido, DDF, I'm more of them, right? Um, they, some of them generate Docker Compose for you, which is, again, you have either love it or hate it. Uh, in this implementation, it's so all pure Docker. So if you know how to deal with Docker, how do you do Docker Compose, um, it's all there. Uh, one, well, I, I do recommend people to just learn Docker Compose. If you learn it, a couple of commands, uh, you, can, you know how to deal with it. Um, flexible configuration using variables. Um, so there is some business logic sitting in some scripts. So depending on the type of the workflow you're going for, you don't have to change the scripts. You can just flip a couple of variables and it will change things. An example would be if you are using, for example, if you are working on a brand new site and you don't have a canonical database yet, uh, you don't have production, right? You would want to something like install every time from your profile. You can flip a variable and uh, that would work straight away. Or if you do have a canonical database, you can pull in from production using a useful command, and um, that will be imported every time you build your project in any environment. Uh, it is uh, identical commands in all environments, which means that whatever you, the way you deploy and build your site uh, locally in CI and in production, it all uses the same logic. So if you want to add another cache uh, rebuild or something like that, you can just add it in one place and it will be exactly the same. Um, order of commands and everything in every environment, which is quite important. In the early days, it, like, you know, five, ten years ago, it was always like you would need to keep everything in sync in every environment, every, um, everywhere you do the deployment uh, order of commands, you have to keep them in sync, and then if they're not, you would have to try to find the why something, you know, failed in CI but does work in local or the other way around or why something's failing in production but past CI. So that was a bit crazy. Now with running uh, identical commands, it's all, it's all um, resolved. Self-testing. 
uh, this is very hard thing was hard for me to achieve. So what self-tested is talking about is um, the DevOps itself because it's a template. And the whole idea there is that you use a template to save time on, on boarding. You actually want the template to be stable. You don't want to have a situation when you rely on a template, you don't budget for onboarding because you know, oh, you know, it's going to take you five minutes. And then your template fails because it has bugs. Uh, so to avoid that, you test the template the same way as you would test a website. And I'm going to show the next slide about it. And the updatable and versionable. Uh, this is an interesting one is basically if you are on DevOps, um, the, you can just have a special tag. Um, DevOps version, and so the next time you want to update to a newer version of DevOps, basically update your template files and glue code, you would know which one that is, and you can always refer back to the um, uh, repository of DevOps. Uh, yeah, just as, uh, coming back to this test, self-tested stability. So DevOps itself runs end-to-end, build-test deployment on every commit. So what you're looking at here right now is the three jobs and Circle CI provide it out of the box. You know, you download your database and potentially cache it. And then you build and test, which is a second job, um, which is actually run parallel containers. Um, and then a deployment, which can deploy to one of your other places. And this, this is how your consumer site would run, the site that uses DevOps. But then DevOps itself adds more. So when I do development on DevOps, that adds, you know, this, these three things. So every time when there is a change, the, not, only the, uh, not only the tests for DevOps run, but also the, the production ones run. Like it's just so you, you know definitely the template is working. What that has helped, there were some issues like with the images or was, last one was this curl version was breaking something and this stack picked it up and was able to de you know, debug these things even before they hit, hit you know, the actual end users, developers. Uh, so that was very useful. Um, now, the nitty gritty of this, what is actually we talking about here? What is this template? Um, just because I'm doing this myself, right, at this point, is there's limitations, but it does work for the full site end to end. So in your uh, repository, you would probably provide, I lost my thing. Uh, you, would, you have uh, custom modules and theme files, and then the build runs and composer, um, you know, takes the core and contrib's. Uh, if you have a database to import, it imports database, and then grunt runs, so the configuration for grunt, uh, you can compile your JavaScript, SAS assets, um, the gulp lovers, there's uh, gonna be support for gulp soon as well, or some other ways. And the, basically at the end you will have a production site, production-like website built locally. So this is all, uh, well, not locally, it's basically in the environment that you build, this is all happens every time you build, whatever environment that is. Um, and then the test part, something you can do manually if you want, or your CI runs these things, is PHP code sniffer checks to coding standards uh, for PHP and JavaScript for you know, Drupal uh, standards. ESLint does JavaScript test for uh, sorry, JavaScript uh, linting, and SAS does, SAS lint does SAS linting. And then support for simple tests, which is Drupal tests, uh, test runner, test framework, um, PHP unit, which is part of Drupal now, and Behat, if you don't know what Behat is, check it out, it's pretty cool. Um, if you don't know how to write tests, you can use Behat to, uh, as a very easy way to write tests. It's behavior, behavioral driven uh, testing. Um, so there is support for that. And then deployment. Um, I do work with Aqua and Lagoon a lot, so I do support uh, Aqua and Lagoon deployments, and they are quite different. Um, I'm gonna touch on that a bit later, but this is deployment stage. So your CI would actually use this bottom part to do the deployment. And also, if you don't wanna do, do a CI, you can deploy from your local machine just with one command. Uh, Another part here, building a Docker, and for those of you who don't know anything about Docker, this part is hard when you learn it. It's, it, is, it is okay if you don't understand how it works, and I had to you know, go through lots and lots of hours to learn things and understand even this simple thing that when you deal with Docker containers, you actually have build, two stages, build and runtime, where you're building 
on top of the existing images. Uh, and then you're adding your application code inside of a container, and then you capture it as an image. But then, when you actually want to run your things, uh, that's a runtime. This is where the containers starting from those images, and containers actually have volume shared between them, so the data can flow between containers, and this is like how it works in production. And only one thing that is different in local is you do have um, values share, uh, sorry, volume shared between the um, containers and the host. This is for the changes that you do while developing to be uh, synced into a container. And this is using just standard Docker implementations. There's no, no, no additional things there. Um, yep. Um, so workflow of actions. Yeah. What, what, what is what I'm talking about? This is glue code actions. What is this? Well, it's a script. Um, it's basically bash scripts. Um, if you know what bash is, uh, yeah, it was basically it's something that runs, um, not runs, sorry, it's available um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a language, language, but it's, you can basically can run scripts to automate things. Uh, as I mentioned before, behavior is controlled by variables, and those scripts run inside of containers, so you're, you actually don't run any workflow commands or anything like that um, on your host OS. You, you run everything, uh, yeah. And use in all environments, um, that. I'm gonna show that, that for example, if there's no GitLab support for now, but if um, it's planned, so in GitLab will be running exactly the same things as CircleCI, for example, which is, so you don't have to reconfigure it for every different provider. Um, and why, so why, why by scripts? Uh, well, it's portable, POSIX compliance, so um, even, such a small operating system as Alpine. Alpine is uh, industry standard for Docker operating systems. Uh, it's just a very small and thin one. Even that one uses, uh, has the bash support. So um, simple to maintain. Again, simple is relative here. If you have dealt with any system stuff that um, you know how to deal with bash. I mean, compared to Python or uh, you know Ruby, which you have to learn, bash is similar to PHP in some way. Um, if you, yeah, um, can be used through a Hoi or make file. I'm gonna talk about this in a moment. And I've actually added a cheat sheet uh, into DevOps itself. So every time when you use in, um, in your, re, in, your consume, in your in your project, uh, you can refer to this cheat sheet. Just explain what things are and what's you know how to do if and then and for and loops and stuff. So it's a quite a useful one. So command wrapper. So now actually just moving into developer experience zone. Uh, if you would ever work with Docker, you would know that um, you have to remember a lot of commands. Like you have to do like Docker, uh, Docker compose, up, minus D, dash dash build. It's just crazy. You have to remember all the things. So uh, there's a way around it is you wrap those commands into a wrapper like Ahoy. So Ahoy is similar to makefile but in my um, opinion, it's a bit better. Uh, it's better in the way that it is YAML. So you can see the, the CMD thing here is the command that it will run, plus you've got the, the usage, which is like documenting what you're doing. And this is a short example of what DevOps has. Uh, you also can configure entry point. What entry point is in this case is basically before every command runs here, I can set some variables or read the variables from some other places. It's a bit detailed, but this is how the whole project is, is configured is through .env file. is another industry standard for providing configuration variables. So you have .env file uh, and the variables there uh, read uh, by this ahoy thing. And um, yeah, so, and if you're a themer, for example, and you are working inside of the theme directory, which is quite deep into, into inside of your doc root, you can run ahoy commands um, from there, and it will find the correct file, and will, um, so you can run it from any directory. Um, and just to compare with make files, so make files is another way of, it's like a wrapper around other scripts. Um, so earlier versions of uh, DevOps had support for Makefile, and it was very hard to maintain because just because of how old Makefiles are, and especially if you want to do some complex things, you have to. Um, it's really hard. Like I mean, you can see this. Even passing one argument here to a thing, it just creates this kind of 
you have to call subroutines and stuff. It's really hard to maintain these things. So I just move everything to Ahoy. Um, if someone want to contribute back a uh, make file, please, please do if you want to. Uh, now, I'm going to actually uh, fly through commands very fast. So this is the commands that you would use as a developer. And this is what I use every day and some other people that on the projects that I've set up using. Um, Ahoy build, that's the command to rule, rule them all. Uh, that's the command that uh, calls other commands, but essentially you, you know, whenever you check out the project as a developer, you just run Ahoy build. Uh, it's, um, it will just run everything that it needs to from zero to 100, basically. It just gives you a website, your website done, compiled, whatever, it just has a website that you can work on. Um, does, yes, yeah, it's build images, starts containers, install development dependencies, and install the site. Uh, then there is a start and stop uh, stack commands. You have a hoi up, a hoi down. That's basically a, just an alias for your uh, Docker compose, up, d, build, blah, 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 all that, all that long strings of things. Uh, so up and down is where it builds the image and restarts the container, where start and stop is where it just start and stop container without touching your images. So you would do up and down, not that regularly, but you would start and stop if you just want to kind of save the state of your um, uh, stack, you would just stop it, and then you can start it later on. Um, install side is another command that you, um, you know, that supports fresh install from profile or install from can canonical database, um, and does some post install commands like, uh, you know, configuration import and updating database and um, rebuilding the drush commands, rebuilding the, um, um, the caches. And maybe you have, you know, you have to clear the uh, search cache or do some other things. So this is the place where you can put all your custom, custom post install commands. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, the download DB is another thing uh, it has proven to be quite uh, useful because if you've been given a project, um, especially if you're in an agency environment, you begin with a project that. Um, before you even started, you need to have a database from somewhere. Yeah? You need to. So if someone has configured it before you, and all you need to do is some, add some credentials, like say for Acquia Cloud or some FTP username password, you can set those as variables uh, locally, and then you just do a hoi download DB, and that just downloads DB. So as a developer, you don't need to know you, that you need to go to you know some UI, download database and stuff. It's all handled for you. With Acquia Cloud integration, it's actually um, this is a script that runs uh, through Acquia Cloud API and checks what the latest backup is available for your production and just pull that down without touching your actual production database. It's actually very powerful because um, you don't want to touch your production database, uh, you know, during during any well any time. You want to deal with uh, some backups, and if you want to the most recent uh, backup. You just do that, and you pull that down. Um, the deployment. The deployment supported different ways. You can have all of them or one of them. Uh, webhook, what that means is when your CI passes or when you're ready to deploy things, you just it will call a webhook that you can configure uh, underneath. Um, again, it's a variable. You just say, oh, yeah, I want a webhook. And the, there are the endpoints that it will call. It's going to be a demo. I'm going to show that. Uh, a code is a very complex thing to do, is especially related to Acquia, uh, which if you guys have worked with Acquia, they have their own Git repositories attached to sites. So if you do not want to do development there directly and you want to have your GitHub repository with everything, um, that's called like a source repository and Acquia will be your um, destination repository, you would need to, you know, uh, compile your site into some kind of, you know, install your assets and install all that stuff. And you want to clean up, remove all the node modules and some vendor directories and other things and push it to Acquia. And to do that, there is this package that I've built separately to this um, that does it all for you. It's basically, it builds this artifact um, with the code and pushes it to Acquia. I'm not going to touch on this anymore because it's quite an extensive topic by itself. Is it a Docker image as well? Uh, the, another type of deployment, if your system, the production system, uh, supports uh, deploying from registry, you can you know, capture your image of what your project and just push it to registry, and that, that would trigger a deployment from your production. Um, now, the other commands are uh, lint. So we can do a hot lint that just goes and checks all the standards, um, different ones. 
There are support for testing. So if you want to run a single test, you would supply the argument to a command. So you like a file name that will just run one test. Usually, wh why is this important? Is because usually to set up these whole things, you need to know how to wire up the configuration, say, for your PHP unit through the containers and to you know, marry it all together, right? So this is already handled for you. Um, you just have a command, just a whole test unit test. And if whatever unit test you have written for your custom uh, modules, that will just run. Um, some utility commands, uh, hoist CLI, if you just run it like that, you will be dropped into CLI container uh, within a stack, so you can run commands with, from the container. Or if you do a hoist CLI, some you know, echo one or something, that will just run that command within the container without dropping you into that terminal. Uh, drush, run drush commands, and login will generate a one-time login link. Another one, uh, important ones are clean and reset. So clean, just, uh, you know, if you have built your site and you want to clean it up from all the um, vendor directories or node modules, you can just ahoy clean and that will kind of give you this pristine state. And the reset will just reset it as if you just checked out the project. So instead of doing this manually every time or checking out the project into a separate uh, directory to test something, you can just do a hoy reset, it will just reset everything. Uh, for front end, the three commands quickly uh, ahoy fe, which is front end. Actually, if you uh, have, like I have, ahoy alias to a, then the type in the commands gets really fast. You just a fe compiles the production uh, great uh, front end assets. Uh, FED is front end development, which will do the same, but will have um, your CSS expanded and you will have CSS maps that you can, uh, if you know what CSS maps are, you can see how your CSS is linked back to your SAS. And few is, it's actually a front end watch. So that starts um, a grunt watch task that uh, looks for changes in your CSS, uh, sorry, in your SAS files and uh, updates the browser using live reload. It's quite a lot of technologies there, right? So it's all kind of handled for you and uh, so you can use that. Uh, debug. So um, it's another thing is if, if you are, um, you know, touching the code and working with code, debugging code is, you know, some of people using develop module, but um, using xdebug is pretty cool and it's a convenient way, right? And up until recent debugging, anything was un within containers was kind of a painful because you have to know how to, again, wire it all together and some, set some variables and do all this stuff. Well, it's been some pull request merges upstream with amazing guys and stuff. And so basically now it's one command. So if you want to debug something, you kind of just need to put the whole system in a debug mode. You just have a whole debug, restarts containers, takes five minutes, and you're debugging. So you, you have all the configuration there. You, if you're using PHP Storm, you refresh the page, PHP Storm will pick it up, will have all the configuration there, and you just debug in straight away. Put a breakpoint, you're done. Finish debugging, run the same uh, command as you would run normally, a hoy up, that will just restart the thing, another 10 seconds or five seconds, and that's it. So like, that's very easy uh, things to do. Um, the next one is doctor. <laughs> so this one is something that came out from kind of user testing. So people were start trying to use it, uh, the stack and be like, oh, hey, why, why isn't it not working? What is the problem? Why, like, why? So, you know, Docker, you would run build and then just Docker will spit out errors. So what's happening? Like, so this one, what it does, is a command that runs before build and after build. And it makes sure that all the tools that you need to have installed. For example, if you don't have Docker installed and you run the project, you know, when you just check it out, if uh, the project, it will tell you, oh, hey, you actually don't have Docker installed. You need to install Docker. You need to install some other things. Um, that's a dependencies. And it will check all of that and uh, will give you this kind of report. Um, I'm not going to stop on this anymore. Um, update, and this is a cool thing. Um, if you have onboarded your project on DevOps and you're using it, and then the new version came out, because this whole thing is not a package, it's not a composite package, it's a template, it's just files, right? This command allows you to bring up the files and uh, uh, bring to the files and deal with them um, uh, and override on the things that you want. Uh, I'm actually running out of time here, so I'm just quickly talking about Amazi, uh, Lagoon, and Acre Cloud integration. Talk about this dependencies IO integration. This integration allows you to have your um, your uh, composite log file to be assessed, say, every night and 
if there is a new version of Drupal module, Composer log will be updated, and a pull request will be submitted to GitHub. And because you already have CI, CI test will run. So essentially, you come, a developer comes in the morning, and there's a CI, is there is a pull request ready, reviewed, CI passed, so you can just merge it, right? So this is your kind of automatic updates going on. It's half of the automatic. I mean, if you have another bot to merge your you know, pull requests that are passed in CI, you can have a full one. Yesterday, someone actually made a, a good example where a bot opened a PR and then merged and then even posted a GIF. A GIF. Uh, so just bots doing everything themselves. So dependencies are your something that does it. Um, I'm going to go through this. Uh, documentation, go through this. So yes, stuff available like readme template files and stuff and FAQ. Deployment templates, onboarding checklist. Yes, onboarding checklist is something that takes quite a lot of time, especially if you're given some old site uh, and you want to bring it up to the modern era. Uh, and on board of DevOps, you can maintain the checklist and the progress of that within the code base. So if you don't have time, and if you're in agency space, if you've been assigned to a different project, someone else can pick it up. So you have this checklist and you track it. Uh, demo, I, yeah, this one. Uh, everyone gets a demo. So, okay, if I haven't been fast enough, this is, this is the time. I'm running out of time. So what happens here, I'm going to show you a very quick uh, workflow, uh, what happens. So this is the site. We're going and to the uh, source and installing. So this is a, there is an installer script that allows you to inst inst instantiate a new site. This is like interactive one. We do need to use Pygmy. Uh, it's a special helper that helps you with Docker. I'm going to touch on this. But basically, you have to have that uh, to start to start using these containers for Docker. Um, yeah. So this is me starting, and this is like I'm acting here as a developer. So I want to have a site Star Wars. I'm asking what are the things, right? What, and I'm kind of filling in. There are some defaults available, but if I want, I want to override. These, these are basically tokens. They're, as I said, the whole thing is kind of dumb in the way that it's, there's not much logic happening here. It's just, it's just about 100 places that you need to replace the same things um, to make it all you know, nice the project like with your uh, URLs and other things. So that just replaces in the template, gives you installation summary, and then um, ask you, do you want to continue? Yes. And what happens here is it actually goes and downloads the latest version of DevOps, uh, re copying files, replaces things, and uh, yeah, installs everything. So what happened now is this is a UI for Git. You just had all the, all the files. And this actual PHP storm, I'm sorry, it's very fast, but yeah. Uh, you have all the files, plus you have a, mo a core special module called core module that has some functionality. And then you have a, a theme as well here. Well, in this case, the theme is based on, boot, uh, on uh, Barrio, which is a bootstrap theme. Um, and actually, there are tests right here. You, always, you already have tests. You, and those tests are actually working in CI. So you, if you want to write new tests, you already have a place to look for. Uh, look at, sorry, as an example. So this is me just adding stuff uh, to the Git. And what happens now is I'm actually having the first build of the project that I started by using Ahoy build. Now, this is 20 times speed up. Uh, the first time uh, Composer has to resolve all the dependencies. And Composer is very slow, even without Docker. That takes quite a lot of time. Like, I mean, 10 to 12 minutes, 15 minutes to resolve all the things. One, it's, once it's, you know, everything is done, uh, and actually fr front-end assets are built as well, um, once everything is done, the log file will be produced. So the next time you, you have to commit the log file, right? So, so the next time, this is how dependencies are managed in, uh, uh, in the module versions. Uh, you commit that, and yeah, that's not going to be that long anymore. Uh, and this actually, at the end, it provided me just now with a one-time login link and project information. So jumping into the site, this is your site, right? This is a site lo running locally. This is whole site running locally. Sorry, it's too, I know it's too fast, but um, yeah. So compose the log. We just committed it. Now what I'm actually doing, I'm going to uh, my repository creating the demo project. So this is me having, I had everything locally, yeah? Now I have to actually push it somewhere. So it's GitHub, create a project, and adding, you know, Git stuff. So now I'm pushing to a master branch. Going back to that uh, project, refresh here. So this is my site, right, on GitHub. So the next step I want to do is I want to plug in my so-called CI. So there's plans to actually automate even this part, right? But right now what I did 
Went to CircleCI, click login with my GitHub. CircleCI, because the project already has configuration for CircleCI, you don't have to deal with this, right? So um, it's already known. So just, just like that, right? Um, already have CircleCI plugged in. Configuration was there. Have three jobs running. The, the database job right here takes, took, uh, can take four minutes because it has to do a first build of the day, and then it caches the database. The following builds will take uh, 10 seconds because it's going to use the cache, so that job is going to be flying through. What's happening here, I know it's again fast, is me adding secrets for deployment. So webhook deployment URL, uh, a status that I would explain. In this case, we're deploying via webhook, so we're notifying our production system about the fact that CI has passed. So when CI pass, passes this deployment job, which is the third one here, we're actually deployed. Uh, while that is running, I'm checking here that the tests produced, produced artifacts, which are like screenshots. So th these, are the f these are the screenshots of, of the files the test produced. Again, the deployment happened here, and uh, we can see the output of the deployment. And actually, there was an assertion there that the um, status code returned by webhook was exactly what we said, was 200. Now, our, we have everything that we need. And this is a, actually, this is the readme file provided from a template. It already has these nice badges, tells you how to start a stack. So anyone now who can, who you give this project to, to work on, any dev fellow developers, they will have all, the, have all this documentation, how to work, has a deployment documentation, FAQs separately. So that part is kind of finished, and so you now kind of have the full featured system with files, uh, sorry, with uh, integrations and tools and whatever you need. This example, I'm just running an example for uh, a hoi lint command. I uh, probably have to stop it for a sec. So that, sorry, one second, I'll just have to, can't keep it up. Yeah. So this is me running the Ahoy lint. So I just want to check the coding standards on my project, right? Uh, it's kind of speed up twice speed, but what happened here is it checked front end, uh, checked front end assets, back end assets, and said it's okay, right? I'm now going to introduce a broken standards, some a line that breaks standards, so something's missing. Run it again, and um, it's going to give me errors, right? So, and that actually failed. So the output of that was one. So it would fail in your CI, it will fail in everything. What if you were given a project with a lot of, all of those things, and you just want to bypass them? You still want to scan them, but you don't want to fail anything. So there is a way, you can change a variable. This is what I did, I flipped one variable from you know, zero to one, and now it still runs things. Actually, you don't see the output, there is actual output there, you know, it's still zero. So that means that CI will pass, it will still do assessment, but it will pass. And another example of custom command is running BDD tests. That's too fast. But so that, that was me running, i just do it again. So this is me running Ahoy test BDD. And that is running this BHAT tests, which produces screenshots and other things, right? So the tests are already handled and it's all available for you here. Uh, it's, and there's quite a lot of wiring going on there. So that's the end of the demo. Uh, there's a couple of more slides, and we have five minutes. Uh, there are challenges to maintaining uh, DevOps. My main challenge is uh, I don't have much community going on. So if you're interested in anything or uh, you want to contribute, please do. Um, another thing about this is if you do not, actually, sorry, I'm touching the other slide. What's next? Uh, support for Composer Create project. Um, I would really want to have that support. Different documentation, uh, introducing accessibility testing as a part of CI workflow, so you have all that out of the box. Galpo front end, nightly dependencies updates in CI, so you don't have to use the dependencies IO as a third party service. Modern integrations, Pantheon platform and Sage is something that I'm not working daily, so if someone is working, please help with this. And more CI providers, is something actually people, lots of people interested in, uh, not the Travis much, but the GitLab part and GitHub actions is a new one for CI. Um, how can this whole thing help you now, finally? So if you are a digital agency and you're looking for standardization of operating environment, so you want basically all of your sites that you're working on as an agency to have the same thing, you can use the, some kind of a template. 
And sorry. And if you're a developer looking for best practices or just to know how th some things work, you can just look into the source code. It's commented. You can see how things uh, are. And because everything is tested, you know that whatever the code there is not just some stale code. It actually is work working code. Um, and if you're a developer without knowledge or time, you can use that as well. So like, you just don't have time. You just, you just don't, you don't have a budget for any of this to learn these things. You can just jump on it. All right, some inception thing. Now, if you don't like, say, amazing images, or you don't like some things, you can fork and update a couple of variables, and you can have your own clone of DevOps with your things, and with, importantly, the most important part, it, you would have all the testing infrastructure and testing things happening for you. So already handled, so you would have all of that out of the box. Thank you so much. Um, I actually want to thank very much kind of standing on the shoulders of giants here, like amazing guys, Acquia guys, separate thanks goes to Salsa, it's Alfred here, um, for Salsa has given the opportunity to trial these things on some of the client sides and uh, allowed to, and Gov, of the government as well, uh, GovCMS, uh, SDP, uh, they have allowed to try this as well and I, I think it was a, a success in, in some way. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for coming and for keeping up with the fast-paced talk. I think we've got four minutes left. Uh, if you have any questions, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the initial talk. I think yeah. we probably will um, look at upgrading to this one. Uh, from DevTools, which yeah, is what we're right, still yeah. using. I think that was version one. Um, given it's all open source, I can probably give you access to our Ansible plays for um, setting up a project in Circle, if that helps. So yep. more of a comment than a question. Yep, thank you. Do you have any other comments? Yep. Cool. Questions? Um, using DevTools, we had the ability to do overrides per project without the need to fork dev tools. Yep. Can you still do that with DevOps? So the question here is that uh, there is was a reincarnation of DevOps, the only version that allowed to um, maintain your own um, overrides, custom overrides. So for example, if you want to uh, you know, remove some business logic from, or you, you do want to support linting, or you do want to add some other support, uh, what are the ways to uh, preserve that support when you do updates for next version of DevOps? So the answer is yes, you can, because every time when you run a Hoi update, it will bring you um, the files, and you as a developer has to resolve kind of which uh, of the things that brought, was brought in from new version, which you want to actually accept. Well, it's essentially, it goes like you go in your uh, Git client, whatever you're using, CI or CLI, or if you use UI, and you just basically pulling in the lines and just accepting what you want. That's, that's the way to update it. I mean, it's still better than doing it manually. It's kind of half automated in this way. Um, you, you can try using all of this um, by just going to the site and reading a little bit about it. And if something doesn't work, I'm going to be still here. Uh, so just come to me, please, and I'll, I'll try to help you out, even, even on your laptops, if you're interested. All right. Thank you for. Thanks uh, again. I just got a oh, so one more. Sorry. One more real quick yeah. one. Are you still using um, Git excludes? No. No. Now you've moved back to yeah, Git ignore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no such thing anymore. It's okay. all. It's all. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, it was very narrow question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs>